boom. We are living. We are alive. We are present in the moment. Let's go. All right, everyone. Welcome to P Plus Coaching. And this time we got Atari. Say say howdy, Atari. We're Texas. Say howdy. Howdy. Hell yeah. So we got this. <laughs> the ship wrecks it. I hate it here. Yeah, me too. I, I actually default to saying howdy just because it's easier than saying hello because that's formal or like a good afternoon hello. because then I gotta like know what time it is. Right. And if I ever slip up and say good morning at like 2 p.m., I look like a fool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go over your set against Fearless from Shipwrecked. Uh, mm -hmm. First things first, good shit. You made ninth of this tournament. That's rad. Thank you, thank you. That Greeley set especially, you kept that together like a true hero. You'd love to see it. So, uh, you saw me after I won the set, right? Oh yeah, absolutely! I, I was very <laughs> emotional. It was... It wasn't even the the fact that I was like... It, it wasn't even the fact that I won that set. Like, obviously I was really happy about uh, that good win. But it was more so the fact that um literally two weeks ago i told you about this in dms but like two weeks ago b before two weeks before shipwrecked i was playing at our weekly and i was so anxious about losing to someone that i thought i was better than that i was like literally shaking the entire set like i could not stop myself i was just freaking out the whole time because i was worried about what people would think about me if i lost and I, how I need to play perfectly to convince people that I'm good enough or whatever. And I like basically did a deep dive into my mentality and I'm like, what's causing this? And I like, I felt like I figured out my ego problem and seeing that in such a short amount of time come into fruition where I literally had the entire venue watching my tournament set go to game five with this well-respected like player not obviously Greeley is not like you know top 10 but people know Greeley and they know that he's good he just yeah. came off of a 3-0 in Kumatora right and being able to keep myself together and still play good smash throughout that whole thing I was so unbelievably proud of myself in that moment and I like feeling that and everyone else telling me the same thing how they were so proud of me it like it was just really overwhelming. Yeah. it. You did a really good job with that because it wasn't like... Like, that's a sloppy matchup at the best of times. But mm -hmm. the both of you were both super... I don't say feeling the pressure. Like, it's not like, oh, you were the only one who was scared. Like, no, the both of you were, like, playing super... Not even scared, but just, like, it was a wacky moment. And even mm -hmm. with that, you were able to, like, stick to your guns and, like, stay stable and to clutch that. And that's rad. Yeah, it helped. It helped too because uh, me and Greeley are both uh, mid set talkers. <laughs> or like, I noticed that y'all we were, were having we a were nice conversation. Just, we were just making jokes, like and having a conversation mid tournament set, and it was it was so much fun. Of all the tournament sets, dude, to talk during is that one. Yeah, we we were we were just having so much fun, just like like becoming friends and like bonding over this funny matchup. Hell yeah. And so it, it, I, I was also was extremely happy that for all the people that it could have been against, that it was Greeley. I had never met them. I had literally never spoken to them before this set. But they ended up being like one of my favorite people in the scene afterwards. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's Eno enough. Uh, what, what's what's it called? Enough story. Enough story time. Uh, so we're gonna. And it's going to sting a little bit to me, a little bit of whiplash, because you know how game one went, and that's okay. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we we got stuff to look at here. Um, you yeah. played Fearless. This was Loser's Round 4. This was to determine who lost, who got ninth, and then who won and made it to Loser's Top, uh, top 8. Yeah. And um, go ahead. The, the biggest thing that I wanted to look at for the set is, like, I'm, like, I'm not dumb. Like, I know that I'm a long way from being able to beat fearless in a tournament set um what i what i want to do more than anything instead of just like you know figuring out how i could have won is just like what should my uh game plan have been going in 
and how can I better recognize things like habits that I can exploit. Right. So like just general general like game plan and adaptation stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to mention um you mentioned that before game one, Lunchables told you it gives you some good advice. It's good advice that you know CCing and shielding Lucario is scary. Try to get try to like whip punish, especially the dash attack, right? Yeah. And that didn't end up I mean, that again, that was great advice, but that did not end up working out in this instance because it was yeah. like that was your whole plan. And we can yes. kind of get into that in a minute here. First, I want to go through, especially game one, I kind of want to just not get through it, but like show you kind of in in the VOD, see what happened, right? Okay, so yeah, this is Twitch. There's only 10 seconds, unfortunately. Yeah. What especially is like Lucario, or F Lucario is a top fearless, yeah. Fearless is a top Lucario. So he knows, yep. obviously, that like his character is good against immobile opponents. So as you kind of hold your ground here, you don't advance, he's going to come in. I got fancy technology. He's going to come in, you know, and automatically overshoot because he's seen three seconds of you not approaching. Mm -hmm. This is like super early on, of course. So this is a very subject to change kind of thing, but... Even from the beginning of the match. And that's something I noticed in a Greeley match. And part of it is definitely the nerves of that, like, game five, super close situation. Your movement is very reactive and, like, hold your ground kind. You don't... It seems like you don't tend to, like, really press your, like, attributes on your opponent, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. And, again, to your credit, the Lucas matchup is whack. It's weird. And Lucas is not, like, not really slower than Roy. Uh, same thing Lucario. Lucario is not super significantly slower, but when you're, especially as a character that's a little bit of a glass cannon like Roy, once you, you have to, you have to have that movement there to get them to worry about the where, right? Because like, let's say, because all you've done so far is basically stay more or less in this box. You've come out, you've come back, right? You've... I can't see the uh, the lines, by the way, if you're drawing. Oh, shoot, my bad. Let me... I'm, I'm shooting the window and not my monitor. Let me fix that. Thank you for... <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's a to realize that you were drawing. I was like, wait a minute. But yeah, um, you can see them now, right? Uh, yes, now I can. Sick, 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 sick. So yeah, you basically stayed in your half of the stage, in your box. You've kind of like gone out to bait things and then gone back. And this is this is literally less than three seconds, so it's not it's not like you should have done something super different. But that is that is sending the message to Shahid that oh this player is not going to be the one pressuring me, and especially for Lucario that means like oh okay I get to overshoot or I get to dictate where my hitboxes go as opposed to like how do I get in. Okay. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. That's just trading with upbeat kills you. Yeah. So uh, I was I was aware of the Lucario snap to ledge from stage thing, and so I was trying to get there early, but uh, I think I misspaced my uppy. Where I, I just like, yeah, what I should have done is just uppy straight up, and I think it would have won. Yeah, it would have won this specific interaction, but then you have that really difficult situation of being like, you're here, and Lucario's on ledge. And Lucario might not have the best, well, like... like... Well, I, ideal, ideally, I hate Lucario with the up B. Oh, I, I see. Was, so was you're here, and your sword hits him out of it. I got you. Yeah. But I, that I makes sense. too close to the stage, and it traded. Yeah, I think this is a kind of wacky situation in the first place. I don't it think was this definitely is... very, very wacky. Like, this isn't something to, like, worry about too much, um, unless this yeah. happens again, or, like, the ma it's a matchup thing you want to worry about. But... I, I don't think it was intentional at all on... Uh, Shahid's side. Yeah, like, at most I think he was going to um, going to ledge and was like, oh, if it happens, great. Yeah. Okay, so here's the first big instance yeah. of, like, Shahid just it, overshooting. Yeah. Because you, you do this wave dash back, right? Now you're here. He didn't even start the dash attack until he right about hit here. So he's hard calling out these, like, these baits and these retreats. Mm-hmm. And out of that, that's not too bad. You know, you get hit twice and then you reset. Good SD, really good SD on that up tilt. That's huge. 
Yeah. The uh, the short hop dare I did was supposed to be a wave dash forward down tilt. I messed up the uh, input for it. Gotcha. That's that stuff is gonna just happen sometimes, especially on this like this kind of set. Yeah. This is something else that happens a lot in this set. Yeah, I, I had never seen a Lucario do this before. They just like <laughs> they just use it as a setup. Following their fire, following their fireball as like pressure. Yeah. If you're because the reason that's working. Let me back this up a little bit so I can get the the screen cap. The reason that's working is because you're not moving around it. You're like yeah. you're accepting the pressure and you're accepting the offense. And here, oops. No, when you you've decided you're going to be here. No, Lucario doesn't really need to know if you're shielding or CCing or like pressing. Just so long as they can make contact, especially if your shield's already low from this, that puts you in a very like, oh, you have to take a risk to escape the pressure or you'll just get shield poked. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to contest this with a button or like use, you know, use vertical to get out of the way and maybe go up to a platform. What am I drawing? Or use vertical to go out of the way with a platform or just, you know, something in place, then this gives Lucario free reign to basically just begin, right? Begin like, oh, they're going to be here. This is time for me to press buttons. Their shield's low. Yeah. Yeah, and this is just tech chasing at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job getting down. I want to point out, though, that as soon as you... I want to draw a little... Well, actually, the camera's going to change. That doesn't work, but... So you get down, right? And you're under this plot. You have a stage. You you run across half the stage before you yeah, even Yeah, I immediately threaten. retreat. I'm, like, getting the fuck out of there. Right. And there are times for that, for sure. But as a trend, it be, it means that Shahi doesn't have to worry about you hitting him. Yeah. As it, was, it was a big confidence thing. I was not confident at all in, in battling him. So I wanted to just get out where I was more comfortable. Yeah. I feel you on that. Uh, but it's, it's you do it's something you do have to kind of like yeah, be I, aware I, I of. Have to, I have to figure that out. Yeah, because even here, like you hit him with that down tilt, but you do give up the stage and then come back to do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Shahid will do that if he's feeling cheeky. He'll just get the aura off you and bail. Yeah, that's a Lucario thing. Ivy can do it too, but Ivy's is way, need to, needs way more precision, so it's a little crazy. I, I like the ton here. Just, yeah. just, just take it it's back. Just like, yeah, this game's this game's this game's fine. I'll, I'll worry about next game. And the is up told it's a funny move. It's one of those yeah, funny moves. That's like what, frame five? Uh behind him, I think it's like frame five or six, yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah. Okay, so game one, was... the big things were the fireball thing is weird too. Like that's not like an end of the world situation, but it is something that it's like, oh, should yeah. kind of stick out going into game two. That also uh, ties into something that Sosa was trying to hammer into my head for a while, uh, which is which is my shield habit. If I'm, like, before, uh, recently, if I was ever, like, uh, ever in, like, a situation where I'm not 100% safe, I will just hold shield and hope they do something unsafe or that I can react to. And so, uh, I think there with the the projectile, uh, I'm used to just being able to block them. And so I defaulted to just running up and shielding them, uh, not being aware of the pressure that comes after. But I, I realized way too late in the set that oh, I can't shield here. I need to keep moving. Yeah. But that's just like a trend in general with my gameplay of me realizing I can't just shield. I have to be able to move. Yeah. Because, like, being in shield is a really bad place to be most of the time. Especially for Roy, because you don't, you can't easily threaten kills out of shield. Yeah. Like, if other we're than, looking... Other than, shield grab, other than shield grab, you have, like, no good out of shield options. And shield grab is good, but, like, you still have the mix-up there. It's not even, like, like, oh, this shield grab is scary, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, what's a good example? Uh... This snare out of shield can push you far away. You know, this shine out of shield, this shine out of shield, this shine out of shield can, like, lead to a lot of stuff. 
Or even like high high reward shield grabs. Yeah. Like Wario up throw out of shield. Snake has snake up out of shield is very potent. Right, snake up out of shield. You can't you have some extra steps to actually get to the kill. It's kinda like Marth out of shield, he has a B, which is actually pretty significant. But outside of that, he has against non fast against non fast followers, he has mix ups. Yeah. Uh, kind of the same thing with you, with Roy. It's like, okay, except with that up B. So it's, it almost argues it's a little worse, except your aerial stuff is better. So it's, you know, it's, eh, but... Point is, you can't, you can't just, like, drop shield F smash unless you power shield. Like, that's not a threat. You can't represent that as, like, oh, I'm shielding. Don't hit my shield or I'll kill you. It's like, ah, I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a character thing. But because of that, that should almost... That should kind of, as a trend, push you away from shield a little bit, even further. Yeah. I think it was just a matter of not of playing against worse players for a while, where I had the luxury of just waiting for them to do something dumb on my shield so I could get a free opening. Right. And now that I'm getting better and playing against better people, I can't rely on that. It's one of those habits that you build like subconsciously as you begin playing, and then by the time you're like aware of it, it's like, wait a minute, this might not be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go into game two. I think that this is a really good set to analyze of, like, how to adapt mid-set. Because from game one to game two, you bring it up. You, like, <laughs> if I remember right, this is, like, last stock, last hit. This is good. Uh, it wasn't last hit. It was, uh, I got into last stock 0%. Oh, 0%? Okay. Well, that's still last hit. No, I know what you mean. It's it still, um, it still last stock. That's, or, or, you know, he, he spawned at killer percent because you know, I could have comboed him. So it, it was basically last hit, you know? Basically, yeah, basically. You know, basically last hit. Basically, Shad's lucky he 3 would you. Because otherwise, you were coming back on his ass. I was, dude, I, I was I was in there. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm, you got, like, I forgot like about this. God damn it. You <laughs> stupid ass menu music thing. I liked that game and I thought this was stupid. <laughs> I fucking, I went back to clip it afterwards because I wanted to show my friend. And you heard me getting mad. Reaction, you were like, oh my god. I thought there was some kind of issue. Like, what's going on? Surely the players want to play the set. And, oh no, they just want to get Monokuma. So, so funny story. Um, you know Zach made the build, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's the perfect choice for the, for the menu. Yeah. I just. So I, w I was talking to him about it uh, before the the event happens and he was like i can't wait for a grand finals game five to happen and before they go into game five you just hear the monokuma theme blaring and it gave me the idea of if i'm on the main stage i want the monokuma theme to play and so it took way longer than i wanted it to i wanted it to just be like a funny me thing too. that i do me but too it took like 17 tries i ended up getting it and then i turned to the crowd and give the thumbs up and every all my friends start dying yeah it's like oh that's what oh god damn it <laughs> It's like, we get it I, now. I don't know if you saw Mickey. I, I did thumbs up, and I saw Mickey fucking explode with laughter. <laughs> you can hear it in the VOD, too. Oh, God. But yeah, I, I am proud of this, and if this is my legacy, I am okay with that. Let's let's get a little more legacy up there before we start putting that at the top of the resume. <laughs> I think it's a fun thing to be proud of. Um, same, the first thing happens in this VOD, same kind of thing as game one, right? He goes all the way over here, uncontested, and hits you. I think you even CC slide the ledge here, right? Like, that's... He, he calls you out really hard that you are not... Like, that run forward is, is a threat. Like, it's a feint. There's yeah. no way you're going to press there. And he calls you out gets his percent. Good feint to ledge. Good up B choice. Even here... Even here where you anti-air him, right? It is it is stationary. Oh, let me get you back on stage. It's stationary. So like you end up here. You don't you don't like go and hit him. You just you wait and he you attack where he will be in front of you. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like Roy's threat zone, I'm sure you've seen the Cephalon thing. Roy's threat zone, you know, blah 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 blah. He's this angle, da 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 da. You know, he has mm -hmm. dash dance. But the threat zone that in game one, at the beginning of this game two, you have shown, is more or less just like, and then a little bit for up for F tilt, right? Like you have not been willing to like move and attack simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's why Shahid is so willing to just like dash attack almost off stage. Like 
He yeah, ran all I, I the way over. I have not there. walked forward with the hitbox yet. Correct. And we're in game two. There, there's one of the first. And you get some solid damage. You missed the spike, but that's still like 40, 50 ish. Yeah. I was really surprised that that spike missed. That was a good call and good option, also. On the uh, shield drop, you get out of the command grab. Good awareness, too, that, um, whatchamacallit, that down B is an option there, and it's the only real threatening option he has here, right? Yeah. Because, like, he either B reverses to ledge and grabs ledge, he just chills, and now he's back turn shield, or he's like, has to move before he shields. Mm -hmm. And even just the threat of, like, you running up and hitting him, even though you haven't been representing it in this particular game, is still really strong. He wants to kind of seal off that stock. He has the aura. And not... So, oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, oh, you're saying, like, uh, the awareness for me to, like, call out the, the down B there? Mm -hmm. So, my... Okay. I don't know if this is going to make sense, but... Let, let, me, let me explain my thought process with calling out that down B. Mm-hmm. All the options that uh, Shahed had there, uh, like you, you can uh, you can go to ledge, right? You can just land on stage and then like dash in. Uh, all of those things uh, require additional steps before you get to the actual pressure part. So exactly. if, you, if you think about if you think about down B, down B there, like down B or burn is the only option that immediately after leads to like pressure or hitboxing like hitting them with hitboxes right everything else requires an additional step or two before you're allowed to hit them right and so i was like he he wants to hit me is what i was thinking so th this is the only thing that he can do that lets him hit me the soonest everything else requires an additional an additional step or two or three before he's allowed to yep that makes perfect I, sense I, it's, it's also like not uh there's, there's no way for him to, like, whiff punish my down tilt here if he doesn't do the down B. So it's just, like, no risk. Right. The most you risk is a very, like, abstract opportunity cost kind of thing of, like, oh, you know, if you down tilt, then it misses, right? Then, yeah. oh, if he if he runs in, then you 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 have to react slower. But that's, that's so yeah. conditional at that point that I think your logic on this risk-reward is super, super on point. Yeah. It's also a, a, a matter of, like, understanding a player's rhythm, right? If, yeah. if like people talk about like smash as like a rhythm game or whatever um people will have like rhythms to their dash dance rhythms to their pressure rhythms to their movement uh that was just like me having an idea of his rhythm at that point in time and he also has aura which right big aura and any kind of resource will ch like play into player habits will play into rhythms like if you yeah. see a Lucario with two aura, they're gonna burn it. Maybe you don't know what, but you know something fancy's coming, right? Like, yeah, because they're not building anymore. Um, all right, so this is a good, very, very safe down tilt. I like the back air instead of the down air, just to kind of like get the consistent knockoff stage. That was a pivot smash. I was very upset. Yeah, they're hard. I was like practicing it for so long too. And that was another wave dash down tilt that I just do full hop down airs instead. I'm amazed that back air hit before Dare came out. You have so much time uh, if you down tilt someone at high percent. Also, back air hits way higher than people expect for some reason. Thanks, Pete Bliss. Ew. <laughs> it's it's like so fine, but like it's because people don't know about it. They're like, "What the heck is that back air?" It's like, "Oh yeah, it just hits high on the backswing." Yeah. Okay, so I like I like your play a lot here. Uh, basically, once you get cornered this time, especially with this plat here, right? Going off of the first game, like it would be expected that you kind of just try to hold your ground, try to catch his approach as he enters your space. But here, you actively you you know you move, use the plat, threaten the falling forward air, and it even hits. Like, you even get a little bit of, like, stagger pressure off of it. Or not even, it makes contact, rather. Yeah. But he's forced to, like, deal with the fact that, oh, hey, 
you know, Atari is going to is going to show the like straightforward forward hitter that just stops me from moving on hitter, you know, whether hit or shield. I'm surprised he held in for that uh, S mash because I've been down tilting a lot. I think if you at forty, if you down tilt him, you might not be able to get like the best combo if he holds out. I but, get a dare spike into a tech chase, but that's really it. But if he holds but out been, on that smash, he's, he is much at higher risk of death. Like you were saying with... Yeah. You're like, how many yeah. steps steps to hit, right? It's like, oh, down B is one, so let's just cover that one. Plus the other ones are, are so many that the child can't like explicitly punish me. Steps to death is like holding out here. That yeah. might kill him at 40. So yeah. just take the safe option of like, oh, the, I'll, the I'll risk get of, it. The risk of taking like... 40 more percent and maybe dying is better than the is like better than the risk of holding out and dying right away. Yeah. Especially because like this is the second stock of game two. And I think this is like the you haven't really like shown a big combo yet. So whether not like it's an intentional thing, but like he just even subconsciously, like you have not shown him you're gonna kill him off the holding in on down tilt. There's no threat there yet to back that up. Yeah. Good punish on the on the uh, thing of my job. They always want to do that. Also, good. Did you know that that was going to happen? Uh, what thing? Uh, his upbeat. Uh, where he like goes up after going to ledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had that happen before during against Dark Gun. Okay, sick. So he has to do that. Yes, he does. It's beautiful. He if he hits a wall, normally if he hits a ledge, the ledge and he's holding down, he'll just or he's moving down even slightly, he'll grab it. But since you were there, he hits the wall, he goes up. And all of a sudden, like, oh, it's a big punish now. And so there I'm realizing, like, that was the first time that I ever, like, didn't retreat after doing something. That second down tilt, yeah. I did. And he ran right into it. He didn't even, like, yeah. that, he didn't even counter hit him. I guarantee you he wasn't even hitting the button yet. He was trying to catch a back dash here. So let me do. Yep. So here, he's thinking, like, oh, Atari's going backwards. So... This is the spot that he was targeting. So mm -hmm. when when he runs, the sword soup like that was like the the most innermost hitbox. You could not have gotten like rest would have hit there. Like that's how deep that <laughs> hit. So in this case, that's a nice little forty percent. Also, that, re that reverse narrow is kind of sweet. Yeah, that was a really good option. See, and now you're in you're encroaching on his space now. Mm hmm. I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember what happens in game three, but I remember this game. I did a much better job of not letting him uh, just overshoot over and over again. Right. Because so like here, this wave dash forward down tilt it catches him moving out of shield. He's even moving defensively, but he's not. He has not expected the um, the kind of like offense yet. I was very surprised that neutral B didn't hit. Uh, I mean, you got to be pretty. I don't want to say perfect, but like. It doesn't hit below quickly. Yeah. I also think what I should have done is I should have uh, reacted to the down tilt hitting on the ledge and just S smash right away. Yeah. If I S smashed immediately, it would have for sure hit and probably killed. Yeah. Because like, like what, what? How else are you expecting to hit this? Like, frankly, like you're not going to uh, get the I innermost hitbox on I this expected, move. I expected strong hit down tilt, so really? I wave dash down. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I did. This this move isn't like. Uppy isn't, like, super disjointed, but, like, I don't know. Like, I don't think he's making it here. Like, like play it back again? Like, I, I don't think I can do slow-mo, but we can... I think I think you can. Uh, is there... Oh, there is speed. speed. Hell yeah. Okay, sick. I think there's this... Yeah, hold on, let me... I'm, I'm thinking of, I think, the frame-by-frame the frame that I can't do on this. Yeah. But on here, like... I don't think he challenges you on stage. I think he's just going to ledge. And the only way you hit this, you hit the sweet spot, is if he's challenging you. But why? Like, you're at 40. You've already hit him significantly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, just, I just him, know actually. that the, the strong hit down tilt has more priority. Yeah, but he didn't make contact with it. Like, that's if the strong if the strong yeah. hitbox also connects, then it, you will get the strong hitbox even if the sour does. But, like... Yeah. He's not... 
I don't think he's going towards you, is my point. I think he's going to ledge. And yeah, I mean, can grab I mean, ledge you're, from, like, you're here. right. I just expected the strong hit to catch him anyway. So that's probably just me not... Yeah, this is uh, like this is in tournament. I'm, I'm think I'm nitpicking. I'm doing hindsight yeah. like vod vod site. Yeah, pro probably. Um, Oops. But like that, that's why my instinct as soon as I saw a hit connect was to do the wave dash down and then like react, because I I just expected strong hit and then when it didn't I was too slow already. Gotcha. I like so your chase I, there. I, you didn't go quite far enough, but like the fact that you've shown. That you're oh I'm you're gonna go that far right? God, that's tragic. Yeah, that, I'm surprised that didn't tweet spot. I I am too. I want to point out that downer out of shield was a call out that you were you were gonna like hold your ground again here because remember you got a really good like like you got a really deep down tilt on him running at you after you mm -hmm. whipped one because he didn't expect you to do a second one. This time he did expect you to do a second one. And yeah. that's the only thing that downer covered. I think I'm, I think I maybe would have caught my dash back too. It might have. It might have. It was it was even close. I think my pivot didn't work or something something happened. Yeah, you, I, I saw you were I trying get, to uh trying to I, th I it looked like a pivot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Good. Neutral be Yep, that's Something just... that happened when me and uh, me and Joey were, or me and Big Large were playing against Dawn and Fearless and Dubs, mm -hmm. is there was one point on an FD game where I didn't have my double jump, and Fearless did up till or cancel, up till or cancel, up till or cancel, up till or cancel on me, and I could not get out. Like correct, <laughs> I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting enough SDI inputs. I guess it was just I was at like twenty percent, and I kept getting up tilted and so there i was just like oh fuck get me out <laughs> you had like, flashbacks of my double set earlier like right here i was like oh shit get me out <laughs> that's why i like fucking was just mashing sdi away yeah that's understandable too because like e even without that prior experience that's just a bad position to be in you do not want to be there <laughs> yeah um i did a. Uh... When I fell through the Smash Bowl platform before, uh, I like fell with an up air. I'm not sure why I did it. Okay, let's see. So here, it was like right here. Oh, because he was right. Oh, because he was right. Yeah, he was like right under you. I think that was really that's good reward on hit. It is. I get I get like a free down tilt into like Nair or whatever I want. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. I think this up is also an inch for snapping. I don't think this was like a. This yeah, is the, a hard call in the moment, to, for sure. Yeah, the uppy was trying to just grab ledge, like, as fast as possible before the ore bomb's there. Mm -hmm. Shad did a like, lot of I, ore bomb that weekend. That was weird. Uh, yeah. He doesn't normally... Or he didn't, he didn't normally do that. Yeah. I definitely know how to get around ore bomb because I, play against, I played against Dark Gun a bunch. Mm -hmm. And he is uh, an ore bomb Andy. <laughs> ore bomb Andy. Dark, Dark Gun likes his uh, funny super moves. Nathan's such a goon. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see, game three. There was a, a real quick story. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the first times I played against Dark Gun in a, an actual like bracket set, it was a, a house tournament at RJ's place, and the set ended, game three, last lock, last hit, with me off stage, unable to recover, but he didn't know that. And so he <laughs> jumped off stage and aura bombed, it whiffed, and then he couldn't recover afterwards, and he died first. That's the most Nathan thing. It really is. <laughs> oh, it's so tragic. I was like, no, why? He's like, I thought it was going to be cool. Like, no. <laughs> God. Okay, so I think obviously game two went the best of the three. Um, yep. But here we kind of see the other end of it, right? Is that it's uh, like you said, uh, like you said before, a lot of your adaptation and your changes are between games, and when game two went like well, but not quite like it was last stock and it went well, but you didn't quite like finish it out. You don't really have a lot to work with. 
Yeah. Because game one, it's very easy to be like, oh, I got hit ten times because I, did, I didn't I did do A, B, C, D, E. But game two is a lot closer. You don't have as intense of feedback. Mm-hmm. So let's see what Shahid does to kind of like... What, what he has changed between games and what he changes during this game to kind of kind of make game three go different than game two. Gosh, he can snap from solo. He literally just snaps from under the stage. It's so dumb. <laughs> That's just unfortunate. Yeah, I was trying to spot dodge. Unlucky. Uh, you can buffer that with... If you buffer that with a C-stick, you usually don't... Well, I guess... If you're buffering it with a C-stick, you don't die here. Because um, you don't get any inputs because it's a buffer. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not sure... Uh, maybe, I was trying, maybe I was just trying to hold shield. I'm not sure. Either way. I'm yeah. still trying to figure out how to deal with the... Uh, the Oris here pressure. Yeah, you got, that was another situation of that. Gosh, that's so low. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're there. Run up and shield it again, just on instinct. I don't think run up shield is awful, but I think that because you were so far away, it didn't really do what you wanted it to do, right? So like here, if you run up, if you run up like here and shield, I don't think that's awful, but you backed up first, so mm-hmm. yeah. So you backed up and then ran up shield. So you only really moved like this far into shield. Which gives yeah. him all that time to follow him behind it. Speed lines. Ooh. There's also a point in this that I remember I tried to uh, side B clank with uh, an Aorus here, but it was too big, so it just, mm-hmm. like, lost. Yeah, side B is what, like 4%? 5? Uh, 4 is probably a good guess. I think Lucario's 3 quarters charge is, like, uh, three quarters or full charge is like at least it has to be full. Full charge is like around 15, 16. So it's enough to get around like those pretty weak moves, but your tilt should probably still be good. You might have to time it to get the sweet spot though. Yeah. Yeah, right there. You clanked and then you were still in clank lag even. It, that wasn't even like a decision afterwards. You just got hit for it. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to test how much damage uh fucking Roy Saipi does. Actually, you, you it clanks and then you still get hit by it and then I, I thought that was yeah. good dash attack. Dang. Okay, Saipi does 5%. 5? Okay. Or probably does I have to do at least 15 then. So that's probably full charge at least, but still. Where's, where's the cario? There he is. Yeah, 15. So, you're right. Hell yeah, my brain's big, dude. <laughs> Okay, I'm not watching. Okay. Uh, so for this getting, this little string right here, uh, this is a little bit of this is just like a DI mix up with the because uh, when you guess right in the throw, if you DI away here, let me back up to to where he actually like makes like drops contact with you. It, he cannot. I don't believe he can get nair. So I believe it's. I, he he can definitely jump nair there. I think frame-wise, I don't think he gets near though. When he has to travel so far. Mm. He doesn't have to run very far, but I think it does make the difference. That's something I I might want to test, but, like, I don't... I'm not super confident in it, so as the one watching, I think it's a suggestion that I, I want to look into. But, on the flip side, if he doesn't get near, then the DI on this has to be a little more out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I was definitely worried about Nair there. Okay. Okay, good call. I don't know if that was intentional, but I was about to point out, he has two stocks of aura, and like I said earlier, that influences the neutral and the decision. So here, I think this is a good CC down tilt, because normal down B would have gone through that, but he wants to burn his resource. So now not yeah. only has the resource been burned, he only has one left, you hit him for it, which is even better. That was, like, uncharacteristically good shield pressure from me. Yeah, it's a very patient shield pressure here. I think it's the same kind of thing of, like, if you hit their shield with something big, then they know 
But, like, this landing fair isn't really big enough to act out of for him. The side B catches him doing something. And then the delay throws him off when he tries to time the spot dodge. If you had just, like, down tilted his shield, that gives him his cue to act, right? Like, oh, down tilt. Even if I can't punish it, I can move. It's my turn. But when you kind of, like, pepper pepper the shield a little bit, it's like you don't have that same, like, big trigger to react to. I also like uh, the last few down tilts haven't been working out of his upbeat, so you just reset the situation. And he realizes this, and that's fine, but all you're looking for is sniping the downbeat. And I think that's a good yeah. idea here. Okay, there. That was a good instance of just avoiding it entirely, going over it. Yeah. There's no platform there, so I didn't really know what to do other than just full hop over it. Hey, he has to call that out. That's his job. Like, he can punish it, but, like, there's a reason that Aurasphere is not, like, Wolf Blaster levels of, like, I win neutral. Yeah. On that, he just... You know, execution checks your uh, your ledge hop. Yeah, I could have forward air there. I can't believe that hit me. That was, I want to watch that again. That was a wild grab box. It is slow. Right. So the grab box doesn't actually start for a while, but it is still a little... Yeah, he has time to, like, air, fall. forward air, too. A forward air is huge. That's a crime. A forward air is a crime. Let's see. Like, look at it when he fucking ledge hops. I mean, that hits your face. You're crouching, too, for this. So your face is a little down here. But yeah, it is, it is a bit... And forward is one of those moves, you don't realize how good it is until you try to jump against Lucario, and it's like, wait, wait, no. This is opposite of Marth Fair. I don't like this. Yeah. That moonwalk was extra. Mm -hmm. You love to see it. So I like, I like, at this part, when you have him at, at ledge in this game, you kind of, like, hold your ground. You hold your stage... And you don't, you don't like, overextend. I had killed him, like, twice. or I had, like, messed him up, like, two or three times already for rolling in there. So I really... I wanted to bait, like, I was covering roll in. And then, like, bait him to do a normal getup or something. But then he still rolled in anyway. I was really shocked. Yeah, it might just be, the, like, the game and stock count. It's like, this, this game is being a little bit of a, a little wacky game. And he's yeah. only one stock away in your Roy at, like, 60. He's also yeah. kind of the same thing as before, where it's like, even if you have killed him for this, it's like it has been like a full game. Or he might just go like, oh, I don't care. You know, I have three stocks. Yeah. There's a lot of different perspectives that he could have here. What a, he's, he threw so many spirit bombs. I don't I, I don't, I think he threw more on Saturday than I've ever, excuse me, ever seen him throw, like period. Mm -hmm. It is wild to me. But, um, yeah, I think on broad strokes, game one was the kind of the getting used to it game. Yeah. Um, and the. Never, really, never playing a Lucario of his caliber before, figuring it out. Yeah. And some of that is just going to be like the first time you play weird, weirdo characters of X level, it's just going to happen. Uh, but also, by the same token. By like by the end of this game, and you do realize it between games, you do get it between games. Uh, he does just kind of like get all that all that damage off of you. It's on overshooting. Mm -hmm. That was a really greedy attempt, but I don't I don't blame him. If I had a spike it, that killed yeah, like fifty, he wanted the clip for sure. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those clip games. Yeah, it's like by the third stock, it's like you know what? This is just going to be this is yeah, going to be a game. Yeah, I think uh, especially in game one, it's a lot of like you haven't killed them for it, like you haven't you haven't explicitly. Let me back up a little bit actually before I do this. Part of it is that oh, if you hit him over here with an F smash, you have to play the F smash down tilt game, right? And if he gets yeah. wrong an F smash, he doesn't die at six, but like it's bad. Versus if you hit him over here, it's like. He has a platform he could go to or threaten to go to that makes down tilt a little wonky. You know, what else? You know, it's like, it's it's fine. He's at six, right? It's just that low percent, like, I got I got stocks to spare. Mm -hmm. Also, up tilt is a really, like, good character-specific option for rolling in. Yeah. 
Because a lot of characters have a, have a little bit of issues. They have to turn around manually to get their fastest options. But like Spacey's, Lucario, that just is their fastest, especially Lucario, that is their fastest option. And even if it makes contact, even if you were ready for it, like you can't really spot dodge it effectively because it's not super slow. Mm -hmm. But even with that, it's like, okay, if this makes contact at all, Lucario time, right? Yeah. And like I said, I think game... I think when you have the time, especially doing stupid, stupid music thing. <laughs> Gosh dang it, Atari. I am not, I am not sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm happy you did it. I'm just sorry it happened. I'm sorry it took 17 <laughs> tries. I'm sorry it happened. <laughs> but um, I think when you had the time here, you were able to kind of, it seemed like you were able to go like, okay, here's what happened. You know, we got bullet point one, blah, 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 bullet point two, blah, 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 bullet point three, blah, blah, blah. And like work on, you were able to, successfully like like okay here's what i need to do you went from nearly getting four stocks to like going last stock with shot hit that's really really good yeah in the span of one game yeah that being said though be between game three kind of the same not the same thing as game one but the same kind of like vibe where it's like shahid's in control mm -hmm. and then a lot of i'm not a lot of is the wrong word and then just a few key things that of, um, I think, like, one or two different things in game two. Like, realizing, recognizing that just like, oh, Shy just doesn't care. He'll just roll in. Because the easy answer is, like, maybe the easy answer from where I am is F-Smash on stage, and he's fine with that. Or, like, maybe I, maybe he, you know, he doesn't care. He just has the stock lead, and if he dies, he dies, right? Mm -hmm. That's hard to get a, that's hard to get a read on. Especially, like, against a, a player you have not played before, uh, who's playing a character who you have not played against of that level before. Mm -hmm. In, like, a top eight qualifying match, on a stage you have not been comfortable, like, you have not experienced before. Yeah. So Also, I this is definitely my first, like, major ever. The other big... That's true, other yeah. Actual... So, other than... Um, like uh, locals. Uh, the only tournaments I actually been to were shipwrecked and AEX in like 2016 in Pennsylvania. Hmm. And so, in terms of in terms of PM, this is my first like non-local tournament ever. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Yeah, I was thinking about that too, like. <laughs> As uh, I was, it took me a second to process that too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like when when you're in DFW, right? Your locals are basically stacked regionals. Yeah, you there's people like Birdman, RJ, Stude, who's gotten really good recently. Yeah, and that's like that's just even a recent like DFW has one of the deepest like retired top player pools of any region. Oh yeah. I, I didn't even get a chance to play when, like, Zach was here, or Zethlon was here, or Shokyo, or Luck, right? Dude, Luck bodied me so much. It was such a good time. I did get to play Luck in friendlies uh, during, like, one, like, fest at, like, the meme house. But he, like, is very out of practice and was very high. <laughs> that, that second might just apply... Um, for, for more than just then, yeah. Generally to luck. God, I have nightmare stories of hearing, hearing, luckily, I did not actually drive to Salty Wands, but um, hearing nightmare stories from the carpool to Salty Wands, it's like, oh boy. Like, he just, like, it was, it was a terrifying time for all involved. Jesus. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, so, I guess this is the question then. Between games, what did you... Was there was there a lot of, like, conscious decisions about, like, oh, I need to stop doing X, I need to stop doing Y? Uh, I definitely realized that uh, he was just calling out my dashbacks, like, by default. And so I needed to make him... Uh, uh, like, my, my answer to that was just to stuff him out before he, like, can run past me. So it was a lot of like down tilting in place or like run up grabs. 
So you, um, you realized the problem that got you hit, and you you got a solution for it. Yeah. I think if you can try to take the time, especially like if you're on Angel Plat, right? Like if you don't move, you do have you do literally have like five seconds. Like if you don't move here, you're not vulnerable until like fourteen. Yeah. So I, I know that's not a super long time, but even just realizing the problem and then just doing what something else can be really helpful. So even if even if the, the line of thought is like, okay, he's overshooting by default, I need to do anything else. I need to move. I don't care where. Like it doesn't have to be a good option. I just need to, to show a different option. Like that's one of the biggest, I think, hang ups that's maybe not you in particular, but just a lot of people in Smash get is because there are so many options, right? Like even from here. You have drift this way, drift that way, drift a little bit in any of those directions. Uh, you yeah. know, do falling up air, do falling back air. He's at kill percent, maybe. Do falling down air, do falling neutral. Like, this is, you know, maybe double jump. Like, it can be a little bit of like, oh, what's the correct option? Like, there's 800 options. The correct option will take you 10 minutes to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, sometimes just pick a different option. It can be, it can be better. That'd be great. It can be... I just a, just a neutral different option that's fine it can be a worse option if it just covers a different thing right like like my favorite example is if i'm having trouble with game of watch as mewtwo forward smash is not the best option by by a fair margin like it's weird and it, it works but it works because it's it covers the the only thing it covers is the one thing i'm having an issue with down tilt uh just down tilt and like aerials in place yeah so there are there are other options I could do that are better to get around that. Like if, if I'm expecting a down tilt, you know, hover in air, or like short hop in general. If I'm expecting aerial, I could like hover up air, you know, hover cancel up air. But F Smash, in my case especially, it's the easier one because I'm not great at that um, technical stuff. That's an option that works. And, you know, between games or like between sets, yeah, I should probably be like, okay, I need to just figure out what I can do today and that's better than F Smash, but you know, in the moment, it's like, hey, S-Mesh doesn't need to be good. It just needs to work. It needs to cover the one thing that's hitting me. So that way, you know, like Dakpo or Snooklet or whoever stops doing the thing that's hitting me. They have to, like, they have to play the game with me now. They can't just go like, yeah. oh, he is already backing up by default. I'm overshooting. When you challenge that in game two... Shadi goes like, oh, Atari... Oh, now we're, now we're playing Smash Bros. Right. Sometimes Atari is backing up and I'm overshooting. Sometimes I'm overshooting and hitting me for it. So now I need to hit him when he doesn't move. And now that makes your movement better because he's, he's aiming for where you are. And especially with the character with the attributes of Roy, that can be good for you. Yeah. Because even if you're in a slightly different place, if he gets the wrong hit of something, wrong kind of down tilt, CC down tilt, especially this percent, is a really big threat. Um, but yeah, I think trying to find those moments to kind of like have a to be able to broaden your perspective in a game will because you can do it between games really well this these two first games especially are a great testament to that you just need the time or you need the like the fresh air if that makes sense right mm -hmm. so i think it's kind of hard with roy some characters can do it better than others if you can i will i will choose my words carefully yeah <laughs> there is there are for some characters there's a list of things that you can just kind of like teach your hands to do and they will do it and then you can watch the watch the other character right so like with Roy, yeah. okay you can dash dance and know like know like roughly where you are based on just like what your hands are doing and then you just you, know, you look at the other character oh this is cursed <laughs> you look at the other character why is it always with you atari is it just me it's just you uh, so when your eyes are here, your hands. Oh, mm. yep. Mm. These are your hands. Your mm. hands are doing your thing. Your your broccoli is over here, dash dancing. Ah uh, yes. And your my golf balls are over here while my <laughs> broccoli is over there. Yeah, exactly. Uh. You get it. This is coaching. <laughs> but my point is, when when your hands are doing the th something, it can be down tail back air. It could be you know like f throw pivot f smash when your hands can do their own thing uh maybe hands is the wrong way uh but like so like if i if i was falco for example right i could yeah. just sit on the right side of the stage and short hop laser right my hands know how to do that 
it doesn't require any extra brain power. Right. I can just look and see how he's responding to it. Right. Like, is he trying to power shield? Is he jumping over it? Is he like taking laser and dashing in? Right. And once you observe that, once you, because like you can't form a game plan without looking at the screen, right? Yeah. Or at least knowing what'll happen. Like I could probably form like a, a loose thing of like, oh, Roy, I, Roy Ivysaur might look like ABC, but like. If I'm seeing like, oh, this was power shielding Razor Leaf, or like, oh, this was playing around down tilt. Now we get to the thinking part, right? Like, oh, Shahid is, you know, now Shahid's baiting me out, right? He's going one, two, three on his approach. If I tell my hands to do something, they'll just do it. What do I tell my hands to do? Like, while, like how much, how many corners can I, if I just tell my hands, like, fair in place can i just tell them fair in place or do i have to be like wait uh with what timing uh you know wait what's my especially if you play multiple characters this can be a problem of like you know kirby versus mennonite is like wait uh what's what's like mennonite's exact fall speed or like what's you know when you get when you get more points of hesitation when you have to ask it when your hands have to ask a question to your head that's where you're gonna get like hung up I and mean, vice versa when your hands can operate on their own, that lets your head, your brain, your eyes all work together and all 100% be focused on this dude. Mm -hmm. So when I say your hands can do their own thing, right? Like, let's assume, like, let's assume you get the grab, right? You have, you, you do your throw mix up, you, you mix up the DI correctly. Your eyeballs see it. This is bad. Your eyeballs see bad DI. Then mm -hmm. that goes to your hands. That information just goes to your hands about like, like, oh, bad DI, right? That means pivot F smash or like, you know, so any, any other option. Oops, that's up. Uh, pivot F smash, pivot far slash. Um, <laughs> but when you introduce stuff like bad di let's say okay oh he he had bad di if you go like if you have to go like oh okay wait does pivot f smash kill at this percent or does uh you know where are we on stage the, or wait pivot f smash am i holding the button for the easy pivot thing or like can i get this when you have more in between then even if like it's going to take longer to get here and it is going to be less accurate because if you just look like, frankly, the amount of muscle memory and the amount of like pure dexterity that we can get is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it will actively stop happening to an extent. Like if you see any yeah. speed runs, if you see just like top level play of this game and melee and everything like that, like this is kind of a cracked sequence. So much so that like, if you introduce any other questions or if you, why am I avoiding the play button? I have a, I have a draw thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you introduce other delays, then this is instead of a hundred percent your hands, now you're thinking about pivot up smash. You're not just doing it. Yeah. And that's this is, general, this is general, like mental stack stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. If you can, if you can not even separate, but if you can have just like, Whatever, if you can partition your hands, I'm, I'm saying hands to be like subconscious, basically. If yeah. you can have your hands have their own little box and be like, okay, this is the hand box. And when I tell the hand box to do something, it just does it and it doesn't tell me if that's a good or a bad idea. It just shuts up and does it, right? It's the intern. Mm -hmm. If you have to, if you ask the hand box like, hey, does, does F smash kill Lucario on good DI from the right ledge facing left at 110? It's like, uh, maybe? No. Like, no, yes, you have to think, like, it, it's, it's a, that's not what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Because then it's, it's asking, it basically, like an intern, what it does is it goes and asks the head, like, hey, just a smash on, you know, da 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 And then it has to wait for the response. The conscious is way slower than the subconscious. So if you just, get, if you just, like, let your hands do it, and sometimes that means, um, sometimes that means taking, like, worse options, right? Like, like you said, no, uh, for that pivot F smash thing, right? For like, let me get rid of some of this. It, you know, I'm pretty sure on the right side of the stage, if I F smash Lucario off, it doesn't kill at this percent. Right. With good DI. So, 
let's say that gets back to your hands. Now your hands have even less time and even your hands have to figure out how to be creative, right? It's like, oh, what do I do now? And time is passing. Your hands are not, your subconscious is not the part that gets that gets creative on a whim, right? That, that or not on a whim. You, hmm, how do I phrase this? If you, if you consciously don't know what to do and like, Yep. Your subconscious like, doesn't have the trying, muscle memory. Trying to figure out, trying to figure out what to do instead, uh, takes up, uh, it, it makes you hesitate, right? Right. And any amount of hesitation is fatal in a game like this. Right. That's why, like, like you mentioned, down tilt gives you tons of hits done. So, like, down tilt back air. That's a thing your hands do. Yeah, like, I, I just know at this point if I get a down tilt at like one fifty on Lucario, I can just do my max height full hop into a double jump back air and it hits. Right. I don't have to like I don't have to be like, oh is this gonna hit? Because I just know. Right. I've done it so many times at this point. And I think those are the moments that you can really like sneak in a little extra thinking. Mm. So like as soon as the down tilt, you know, double jump back air hits as soon as the down tilt hits, consciously you know that's a KO. Like, let your hands do their thing. And then between that, that gives you maybe, like, three, four seconds of, like, okay, overshooting. What do I do? Even if you don't mm. receive a solution in that time, you think anything else, right? Like, just, just start throwing stuff at the wall. I, I have recognized this is a problem. Or maybe let's say... Oops. Oh, I can undo to redraw things. That's cool. Um, let's say, uh, you know, like, oh... Shahid's rolling in all the time, right? Or let me get the Shahid's rolling in. Even if all, even if the only you can't come to the conclusion of like, here's how I improve this, right? Here's how I punish, kill him off of this. It's like, well, now I know he's rolling in. My hands won't be surprised. And then yeah. that feeds back into like when my when your hands aren't surprised, they don't have to ask the higher ups in your head for help. So your hands can do their own thing. Like if you're, let's say you're here, right, and you're like. You're not sure where he's going, but you know that the roll in has been happening because you've thought about it, you know, after the last stock, even if it's only like a, like an F tilt, right? Your hands will react faster. And then by definition, you will have to think less about the situation, which gives you a little more breathing room to think more about the other situations. And it like, it's a positive snowball effect. Mm -hmm. So like my my brain is like doing the connecting the dots decently like in between games where i'm not like in the heat of the moment playing a, a fighting game mm -hmm. but so what i need to be able to do is recognize like breakpoints in the gameplay or like uh what do you call it? like like stalling points yeah and you can and literally have stall too thinking, yeah have that thinking in the middle of the game yeah and like, like there's eight minutes, right? I tell, I say this to a lot of people. No one hits eight minutes. Like it just doesn't happen in this game. Yeah. This eight minutes is here just in case. It's like in case of emergency, look at timer. Yeah. I can think of like one tournament set I've ever watched where the timer has been a factor, and ironically, the, one of the players watching at least did not notice. Uh, Luck unfortunately lost that timeout at Salty Wands. It was very sad. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Remind me to ask you about timer stuff after the session because I was talking about this with some friends of mine and I wanted your opinion. Sure. But it's not, it's not, it's not relevant right now. Gotcha. So as you can, it's like a positive reinforcement effect, right? So it's like, as your, your hands do, do stuff on their own, right? Step one, that gets you more time. More time to think specifically because like you don't have to think about down tilt back air you just realize oh down tilt hit your eyeballs tell your hand down tilt hit and then your hands go like yep. swing back air okay, go up go up and hit them right so two that gets you more thinking I'll say more brain because thinking is eight letters and this is hard more enough brain. as it is more brains when you have more time to think you think more man this is great coaching when you think Man. more, you have more solutions, or at least acknowledging more problems. You're able to see what's happening. Uh, solutions are both long words. Crap. 
Okay, we'll just write them both. An answers? Or, uh, I guess it's the same number of letters. Probs and solutions. And once you have more problems and solutions, you, like, your head knows what to tell your hands to do. Once your hands know what to do, you have more time. And it's, it's, this, it really just loops back in on itself, right? Yeah. Pop, pop. Yeah, so, so, like, uh, being able to, vi like, visually, uh, hit confirm a down tilt at kill percent, uh, gives my, makes my brain have to do less thinking. Right. Uh, about about the actual execution itself, and so when I'm not thinking about the execution, I can think about the neutral and like the the match and the counterplay, right? Which give which gives me more time in game if I figure out something, and then it happens, I can visually recognize it. That will free up more time for my brain to think about other things because I've already figured out the secondary thing. Exactly. Having enough time to to go back and think. This is how. This is how, like, the really top players, you'll see them come up with, we like, not even, not that they're, they're good solutions, but they're, like, really in-depth solutions, even during a set, because they've been able to, like, basically streamline this process of, like, okay, you know, like, I guarantee you, there's, like, a, a one one percent of Sosa's mental stack is, per once he gets waft, is permanently looking both at your percent and at your DI. If you miss a DI at kill percent, dead. Yeah. And he doesn't have to think about it. That's just part, like, 2% of his right eyeball just... And because he doesn't think about it, it just happens. Both, like... It seems like it both happens, like, out of nowhere for us, the viewers, for his opponent, and almost for him a little bit. Like, it's like, oh, they didn't do this. Dead. Like, there's no in-between. There's no thinking. There's no hesitation. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. All I right. actually was playing with a Gooch Canoe... Uh, last <laughs> Please night. call him Matt. I hate that tag. I what do you mean? His, well, because he shortens it. He doesn't go by Gooch Canoe. He goes by Gooch. Okay. Well, I I know them as. <laughs> okay, you're playing I with only, Gooch Canoe. I've only ever called them the whole thing. <laughs> also, it's hilarious. He's such a goon too. That's why it's weird because he, he is such a goon that like, oh, he is a kind of he's Gooch. That kind of fits. I don't like it. So you're playing with Gooch Canoe. Yeah. I, I was I was playing with Gooch and um, he like asked if I wanted to he like asked in general like who wanted to grind like later in the day and I'm like oh I'm awake and so we played for like an hour and he would one thing that he would do a lot was falling or like landing with zero suit side B and uh, I realized that it was getting me killed and it was annoying and so I had to like I had to like think like okay what's my solution to this, mm -hmm. and I know that if you crouch cancel it, uh, and you're close enough you can like true punish it, and so there was one point where I was just like waiting for the side B to happen and then just like testing different ideas, and so I realized that okay I can't down tilt, I can run up grab, if I'm close enough I can forward smash, and there was yeah. one time where I was just like had the idea of. Or it wasn't even like it wasn't even like a conscious thing. There was one time where he just like was in the corner, uh, and he fell with a side B, and I ran up and instinct and like preemptively held down, and without even thinking about it, my brain was just like, "Oh, I'm close enough to F smash here. Yep. If I if I get if I get the CC," and so it wasn't even like a, a purposeful, um, "Oh, maybe I can F smash if this comes up again." It was just I was there in that situation where I know I need to CC, and my brain just it like if you watch this if you watch the scenario it looks like I was ready I wasn't yeah. ready at all I got hit and my brain was just like wait I can S smash and I just did it so fast yep and so that's like what I was talking about earlier was like I can do this all like subconsciously because like that was a very it was a very deliberate like I adapted to it obviously but it wasn't deliberate right. Right, you realize so, there was a problem, and you just test out solutions naturally. I was just testing, yeah. Um, and so I, I, I think once I get better at um, consciously uh, doing these things instead of just like letting my brain do the hard work, because that, that's why that's why it takes so long. I think is because I don't ever take time in the middle of the game. I only ever do it 
after the game. And when you're net playing with someone, you you like you win or lose a game, and you both just instantly go to the next one. Right. Right. So that's that's why I I think that's why I felt like my adaptation was really slow. Uh, even though like in this set, I went from getting like almost four stocked to like bring, bringing it really close. Yeah. Uh, because I just, I just have more time to think in between games. Right, and I think I think this will benefit you a lot for that reason. Being able to streamline this process. Um, I think that's more or less the last big thing I wanted to cover. Um, in the chat, just uh, that is a lot of questions. Um, just a heads up, chimps. I need to find a way to like put this somewhere. I don't respond to chat questions a ton when I'm coaching because like they paid for the time. Um, but I think this is this is kind of like relevant to this whole process. Uh, Chimps in the chat was asking like, how do you incorporate percents, gravity, fall speed, and combo follow-ups? What's the thinking process? How do you break kill confirms down into like boxes? And oh, when this per character, this percent, you know it works. I think it is a lot of the same process as this, where it's like, oh, part of this is also just putting people into putting characters into boxes, right? You have like spacey box. And you have semi fast follower box, and then you got like the the dreaded super floaty zone that you don't touch. Yeah. And, you know the other in betweens. Um, but part of that is just like oh you know character A, character B, character C, uh, character D, character E, etc., character Z for Xamas. Um. And I think part of it is also just like, again, removing this, removing the steps to get there. Because like, if you have to think about, oh, what percent does down tilt back air kill? You're probably not gonna get the, the best down tilt back air, you know, execution. So what I, what I think happens, what happens for me, what I think happens for most people, I'm gonna go through brighter color, is- Also, also I, think, I think the whole time it said a uh, raise on the overlay. Does, I uh, never transitioned it. <laughs> oh, I changed it. I just never transitioned it. Damn it. I'm a failure. I, I went back to look at the, no. the chat. And I saw your stream. I was like, wait, I'm not raised. No. I didn't notice <laughs> the names were both so short. <laughs> okay, so I think part of this is just even out of game. Like, being able to put characters in these boxes. Of, like, you're not like, oh, what do I do against... Falco, it's like, no, what do, I, what do I do against spaces? Like, super fast fallers, right? I go, yeah. this box. Why is that so thin now? What have I done? <laughs> that Why is that so thick now? What have I done? This, <laughs> this is a bad time. But you go like, oh, I go to my spacey box. Or like, my fast faller box. What about, like, like Meta Knight's a really good example, right? Of like, oh, I go to my semi-fast faller box. And then Meta Knight's a little weird. He has an exception, because his gravity is lower than... His gravity is lower than the correlation of gravity and fall speed. So, like, he takes longer to get to his maximum fall speed, which makes him weirder to combo. So maybe you can have a little, like, little, like, oh, F star, right? Like, Meta Knight, but. He's this box, but. He, he's a minor exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. So then... For me, go ahead. For me, I have a, a, a list in my head of, like, Roy combos and punishes uh and i i like i know the the punishes in my head and i have like a mental list of characters it works on right uh so for like uh spaces right i know i can't do like uh down tilt into multiple up airs at like low percent i have to, I have to they would fall out too fast i have to grab right so when i I'm hitting a spacey, uh, I just like, oh, in my head, I look, what are the spacey combos? And I like, oh, this is a spacey combo, and so I'll do that. Or if I'm playing against a puff, right? Um, I can't like up throw, re grab puff. And so if I'm grabbing puff, I'm like, what do I do? Oh, I can do like down throw into up air, that usually works. Or like down throw back air, forward throw, forward air. Right. And so I, I, I just have like a, a, like, like a move list in my head, and just like, next to it is like applies to this many characters or if even if i don't know an exact character like i don't play against all of them at all like i know generally who uh what character is like similar to their weight 
and I can just kind of make an educated guess. Right, he's like eh, kind of a floaty, and then you can fiddle with it, right? Yeah, and if he, he like falls a little, he falls a little slowly. So I can do like you know forward air chains if he dies bad, like down down tilt up air probably doesn't work because he can jump out of it. Um, so just like end it end it quickly with a back air or something if I ever get him in a a chain. Right, I think that's basically the way to do it because that frees up your brain. You don't have to think about oh, what about Falco specifically? His fall speed is slightly higher yeah. than Falco. Like, that's not relevant. That's that's too yeah. granular to like still be functional. While One thing about that it. I've definitely realized is that like good fighting game players will just kind of have a favorite punish in a certain situation or a certain combo that they'll just do. Like I was watching um, Lunchables. Uh, gameplay a while ago and I was really confused because in this set that I was watching it was like him versus Birdman at some IAB, right? Mm -hmm. He was constantly jumping up to the PS2 platform wave landing off with a forward air just constant. He it was the only thing he would do in neutral and I asked him, I was like why are you doing this so much? Like I, like, I would have just called it out like four times at this point, like why are you like relying on it? And he was like, well, it's good. And you know, it covers this area. It, it, and it, like, the biggest thing that I didn't realize was like a big thing until now was just like, it frees up his brain. Exactly. To, like, look at the other character and see what they do instead. Yeah. Like, it's, a ha it's a half decent option that frees up your brain because you're not trying to get crazy with other options or the most optimal punish or the safest neutral option. Right. It's just something that you're comfortable with that you do that frees up your brain to have more space for things that matter. Right. Same thing with, like you mentioned earlier, Falco Laser being like, okay, what are they going to do? Like, are you, you need a second to think about, like, wait, okay, yeah. how has Puff been it, it, grabbing me as Falco? This shouldn't be happening as much as it is. What am I doing wrong? You just shoot gun. Yeah. Or you dash yeah, dance. A, a, a bad player would probably, or not a bad player, but like a, a, someone else would worry about their laser height, right, while they're shooting. Which is a good thing to worry about, but in the moment, instead of trying to focus on getting the lowest lasers to hit a crouching puff, instead you should just be thinking about uh, just lasering and letting your brain think about what your opponent's doing. Exactly. I think that I think that this is a really, really big thing that is hard to kind of like understand without kind of concrete examples. And I think the forward air one from Launchables is like the Especially for Roy, the perfect example of like, oh, especially on he plays on PS2 all the time, just like swing sword, swing sword. What are they doing? Swing sword. It's like see, he's swinging the sword, and then just Roy is staring at the opponent through the screen. Just... Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think this is this is the basic kind of like not workflow. That that sounds weird, but um, the basic way to to get more time out of the out of the same the same match is you physically have more time to think because you are more comfortable with the situations and you've thought about, literally thought about them ahead of time. So you have more time, so you can have more situations to think about. Or, you know, like, oh, you can put characters in boxes for like, you know, like, oh, f floaty enough, whatever. Like, floaty I was, enough to get hit by this thing, right? Yeah, like we were joking with Che all weekend that Ganon's a floaty. Because everyone else in our Airbnb plays like a super floaty. Like, we got like Mewtwo, we got Ness... Uh, Kirby, and he's like, Ganon's not a floaty. And it's like, you're more or less a floaty. You're not a, you're not a it's spacey. It's basically a floaty. Yeah. Because it's like, it's the box is like, you know, it's, maybe it's a Venn diagram. You have like a different color box. It's a, it's a Venn diagram. You have like this box of like, Ganon's like around here somewhere. It's like over here, yeah. It's like a, it's like a political chart. Like, Ganon's like, <laughs> no! like, leaning towards floaty. <laughs> like economic right, socially left. <laughs> Ganondorf, king of evil. <laughs> Economically, fastballer, socially floaty. God. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, God. Okay, I think we've officially tangent. Like, we've got off the rails. Oh, yeah. Um, but as, yeah. As, as is good and just. Yeah, as is how every single Jasper coaching session goes. Absolutely. I truly, this is truly one of the, the, the truest bad endings. Yeah. Um, I need to milk the hour as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, Sunset and chat. Be, if Sunset wasn't here to be like, uh, you can take your time, I would feel very bad about this. But uh, <laughs> thank you for coming to chat, Sunset. <laughs> also, just for hanging out in general, but especially for coming into chat and being like, wait, Jasper probably isn't checking Discord right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I think 
We'll go ahead and call it there. Uh, if okay. you don't mind messaging me about that uh, timer thing, um, I need to set up Sunset's lesson super quick, and then we oh, can talk about oh, that okay. afterwards. I didn't realize you had another lesson. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for booking, obviously. Uh, I think this set was a really, really good example of like exactly what you wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. And I think... Because uh, locals are going on in DFW now, right? Uh, yeah, they've been started. So, Tr uh, Trey said possibly we can... Now that LTC is over, we might get uh, a more concrete event, like a monthly or a weekly. Gotcha. But it's all in the air right now. But well, we have been having weeklies. The big thing is that you have a way to play. Uh, yes. It's a relatively consistent basis. You have a way to practice this kind of thing, especially against the same people. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch the pen because then I'm gonna start drawing and it's gonna, it's gonna be some awful stick figure. You're gonna clip me on Twitter. You still need to clip that. <laughs> I need, I need to. I was gonna go back after this and go get the stick man. Um, yeah, Roy Stickman. Um, but. Especially if you're playing the same person, that gives you a little bit another a little bit of a shortcut, right? Like, oh, RJ really likes um, I don't know if he does, but let's say RJ really likes Fair from Ledge. This is something I can just put my character in this position and not think about, or like it's a habit I can observe while I'm you know down tilt back airing, or like you know mm -hmm. you have when you're playing someone for longer, you have more to work with, basically. Okay. Okay. That, that, is, that is the last thing I'm talking about. I promise. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you again for booking.